Hi and welcome to the University of Hertfordshire's Sport and Exercise Science Offer Holder Day Welcome Talk. This talk is going to give you a little insight into what is involved in the Sport and Exercise Science course, what you as potential students can get involved in if you come onto our course, um, and then a, a little bit of information on the university as a whole and the other things that might interest you in regards to that. So firstly, just want to give a little insight into what sport and exercise science actually is. Some of you will currently be studying sports science, perhaps at BTEX, or you might be doing PE within A-levels. Um, but sports science can be a, a relatively broad area because it allows you to go into lots of different um, employment avenues. And so I just want to show you a little video to highlight some of the areas that you can go into with a sport and exercise science degree. Athletes today can run faster, jump higher and hit harder than ever before. Thanks in part to sport and exercise scientists who are using their understanding of physiology to optimise athletes' training, performance and recovery and helping us live healthier lives through physical activity. Take Jamie. He works as the sports scientist for a professional football team. Jamie is helping the players stay injury-free by using sensors on the skin to gather data on muscle contractions and fatigue and using these data to tailor players' training to maximise performance and minimise injuries. Then there's Victoria. She's investigating why athletes with spinal cord injuries seem prone to overheating. This is when our deep body temperature goes too high, increasing blood flow to the skin and putting greater strain on the heart. Below their injury, these athletes' bodies can't regulate temperature through usual methods like sweating. And the higher up the injury, the worse the problem is. With competitions like the Paralympic Games increasingly held in hot climates, this research could play a vital role in helping to prepare athletes and keep them safe. And it's not just athletes who benefit from sports and exercise science. It's also helping people with physiologically challenging jobs, like those working in extreme environments and the emergency services. Radica works with the fire service to measure the physiological impact of wearing protective equipment like respiratory devices. These units allow firefighters to work in hot, smoky conditions, but the extra load can place increased strain on the heart and decrease firefighters' capabilities. So Radica's research is being used to devise recommendations about how long firefighters should use such protective equipment. And what does sport and exercise science mean for the rest of us? Well, it's been said that if exercise were a pill, it would be one of the most impactful drugs ever invented. From improving patients' fitness prior to surgery to combating epidemics such as obesity and diabetes, sport and exercise scientists are showing us how physical activity can help us to live healthier lives for longer. But is occasional exercise enough? Recent research has uncovered something known as the active couch potato phenomenon. This describes people who are physically active but who still spend many uninterrupted hours sitting down. It turns out this can cause real problems for our bodily systems with increased blood pressure, cholesterol and risk of cardiovascular disease. So sport and exercise scientists have a big challenge to make sure we're moving more and staying healthy. By helping athletes, protecting workers and pushing for greater public health, physiologists in sport and exercise science are using their knowledge for good everywhere. Now is a great time to get involved. So that was a video on the by the Physiological Society looking at all the different roles that you can do within sports science, which is really broad. The sports science courses tend to be pretty broad, so it gives you a big um, or well, wide range of roles to go into afterwards. So here at the University of Hertfordshire, our course is made up of the fundamental components that you would need as a sports scientist to go into some of those roles that you've just seen. So we concentrate on areas such as biomechanics and strength and conditioning and this is a picture of our current biomechanics lab but it's going to be about three or four times bigger come September because we're, we're moving facilities the biomechanics lab is going to be um, a lot bigger um, but that will allow you to analyze movement so how the body moves how the forces act upon that body um, and then strength and conditioning is an area of how you then can when you understand the movements, how do you get those movements stronger? How do you condition athletes to perform better within their sport? Or how do you condition firefighters to get better and cope with their environment? We also 
look at physiology. So this physiology is a very big um, role within our degree. It's really important. Obviously, that's a really big part of sport and exercise science. We've got lots of wet labs as well as dry labs to allow you to investigate lots of different areas of physiology within an exercise setting. Um, and we're going to have altitude chambers to experience, so you can experience the different physiological demands when you're at altitude and under different temperatures. <clears throat> we also look at psychology, so a big part of the course is psychology, understanding how um, this can influence performance as well as exercise adherence. This makes up a really large part of the course. And then nutrition. So we're not expecting you to eat hamburgers like that one, but it's really important to understand the nutritional elements within all the food you're eating and how that can influence mood, athletic performance, health, um, <clears throat> across like a daily and longitudinal setting. So what does the University of Hertfordshire have to offer in regards to sport and exercise science? Well, our BSc sport and exercise science degree is endorsed by the by BASES, so the British Association of Sport and Exercise Science. This is really important because you need or you want to have a degree that is accredited via BASES because if you want to work in like Premiership football, Premiership rugby later on in your career, you need to become a chartered sports scientist via BASES. And so a way of ticking off a lot of hours of that is through having an accredited degree. So we have that. Our staff are accredited and chartered via the British Psychological Society, the Nutritional Society, the UK Strength and Conditioning Society and the National Strength and Conditioning Society, which is the American um, Strength and Conditioning Association's qualification. We've got extensive laboratories, which are, which are going to be three or four times bigger by the time you guys start. So as of September, we're moving over to new facilities where there's been lots of investment in regards to laboratory kit, obviously new rooms and um, lots and lots of new facilities. We've got a really good record of student support and guidance. So I'll show you some NSS feedback in a few slides time, but we get lots of good feedback from students in regards to how well we support them and guide them throughout their journey here at Hertfordshire. In regards to the course, we really emphasise theoretical knowledge because we want we, you to be strong scientists, but we also really push the practical skills. So lots and lots of assessments and <clears throat> lessons are practical based because we're trying to make this qualification as vocational as possible because the most important thing of this is making you employable. So we want to give you as many, many employability skills as possible throughout the course. And then lastly, we have lots and lots of cutting edge research and consultancy going on, which you can get involved in. You just have to contact and go and speak to the person in the area you're interested in, and they'll kind of bring you into that research loop. So we've got things like um, areas on physical activity and health, nutrition, nutritional supplements, how that can affect exercise and health outcomes, lots of sport and exercise science psychology research, and then my area is molecular physiology, so like genetic characteristics of sporting performance and injury. And then we've got lots of consultancy going on. So lots of opportunities for you to get involved in at Hertfordshire. So the entry requirements for sport and exercise science at the start of the year were 104 UCAS points. So this was to include at least one A-level in science from, as you can see, things like human biology, biology, chemistry, physics, psychology, etc. Or it was a DMM uh, within your BTEC Nationals in Sport and Exercise Science, so that would be NQF or QCF. Or if you were doing an RQF BTEC in Sport, it was um, a DMM as well. And then we also look or take on the Level 3 OCR CTEC Extended Diploma in Sport and Physical Activity. But there are lots of other BTECs that we consider, but that's just kind of down to tutor discretion. So you just kind of get in contact with the admissions tutor, which is myself. Um, <clears throat> and if it's the International Baccalaureate, it's 112 points. And then that also includes GCSE Maths, English Language and Double Science at Grade C. However, there is obviously a caveat with that because due to the current situation with the coronavirus, um, obviously exams and BTEX potentially going to be unfinished. So therefore, there has been changes to this. So for the most updated 
um, entry requirements, it's best to get in contact with the admissions team at, in regards to Sport and Exercise Science at the University of Hertfordshire. So in regards to course fees, the BSc Honours Sport and Exercise Science degree is very similar in regards to the cost of many other degrees, so 9,250 for UK EU students each year and then for international students 12,350 per year. This is the course structure of our BSc Sport and Exercise Science course. So at the top you have level four, which is the first year. We have core based module, modules in the first year. So they're all compulsory within the first year. So a big 30 credit module is human physiology and nutrition. Um, because obviously this is fundamental in sport and exercise science. So that's really important to get a good base within the sport and exercise science world. Then the yellow one you can see is academic and professional skills. This builds a academic profile for the student. So a good ability to write, to communicate and to reference and cite in the right manner for your study across your three year degree. The box below that is called exercise prescription fitness testing. This is the fitness instructor type module. So it builds your skills on practical elements in regards to testing and training athletes and the general population. And then the two blue boxes are psychology based. So you've got skill acquisition and motor control and then introduction to sport and exercise psychology. So the, the foundations of becoming a sport and exercise psychologist there. In the green box, you have musculoskeletal anatomy. So this is all about understanding how the body moves, the muscles, the soft tissues involved in it, the bones, the joints, and being able to kind of locate them and isolate them in the right areas. And underneath that, you have principles of biomechanics. So the fundamentals of biomechanics, so looking at kinetics, kinematics of movement um, there. And that's your first year. And so also the human physiology and nutrition is what's called a 30 credit module and then all the other ones are 15 credit. So they just run one semester, whereas human physiology and nutrition runs across two semesters. Then when you get to level five, then you get a number of optional units. So you have some core modules, which are compulsory, and then you have some optional modules. So your physiology module moves on to exercise physiology and metabolism. So looking at the physiolo physiology of exercise and metabolism, so how that is affected. Then you get applied biomechanics. So now you've understood the, the principles in the first year. Now this is more about applying them and testing them. Then you have research design. So this is a module that kind of your choice of area to study because this flows into applied research projects if you look down at the bottom of the screen which is where you do your dissertation on an area you've chosen so research design is you researching and choosing an area you want to study that feeds into the applied research project and then the blue boxes is now taking the fundamental skills of psychology and applying them um, into an exercise and sports setting and then you have the optional modules so you have exercise for a healthy population which looks at how exercise can influence health and metabolism across a variety of populations and underneath that you have sports conditioning and testing which is one of the modules i run and that is like a strength and conditioning type module so it's within an applied setting how do you get people people athletes fitter stronger faster and what are the right tests to assess this then we have a business based module which is an optional one called process and practice in high performance sport and that looks at how do you build a, a strong business base if you're going into the world of high performance sport and then the green box follows on from principles of biomechanics this is functional anatomy and clinical biomechanics so looking at how you then take those principles of biomechanics but into an injury based clinical setting then you move into the third year at level six and you see you have all the all the modules are optional apart from applied research project which is a 30 credit core module where you run your dissertation so you have performance physiology which is a physiology based module which is 15 credits and looks at obviously performance physiology so in different so settings such as space altitude how that influences the physiological mechanisms of the body 
you have exercise referral and health promotion. So following on from exercise for a healthy population, a really popular area for sports scientists is working in doctors referral units. Then you have work experience in sport and exercise science, which is an optional module what you can do for one semester and you can go and work in a sport and exercise setting and it just looks really good on your CV that you've built up work experience whilst also studying at the same time. The blue module is technology and sport and this is like a sports analysis type module where you look at performance and you would assess it so you might watch football, cricket, netball, basketball games, you might watch the movement, you might analyse the movement or you might do what's called notation analysis like look at the number of passes, the technique, the setting, and then how technology can influence that performance within sport. You then have what's called contemporary issues in sports psychology and exercise psychology. So just follow ons from the sport and exercise science. And then you've got advanced biomechanics, which is obviously then a follow on from functional and applied biomechanics, looking at biomechanics at the perhaps the most extreme levels. You have sport and exercise Sport and performance nutrition, sorry, which looks at the nutritional aspects and how do you um, feed correctly the elite athletes and the general population. And as mentioned, you then have applied research project. And then the last two are strength and conditioning, which is a follow on from sports conditioning and testing, which looks at how do you get athletes bigger, stronger, faster. And there's lots and lots of practicals across those um modules there and then the last one is enterprise and entrepreneurship in sports business management which follows on from process and practice in sport one of our biggest selling point points at um, the university of Hertfordshire is our placement year so that is an optional or well, this is an optional year sandwich year placement that you can do after completing level five study so year two study and you'd go and work for a year um within a sports environment, hospital environment, sport and exercise science environment, um, wherever you choose. And it basically builds on you getting lots and lots of work experience and becoming more employable at the end of your degree. So some of the placements that we've had students at and who have then gone on to work in these areas, things like Arsenal, Saracens, Wasps, um, Medical Research Council, lots of schools, West Ham in the community, University College Hospital, Oklahoma State University, Canberra University, lots and lots of places. And we get lots and lots of good feedback from the employers as well as the students as to how this really builds the really well-rounded sport and exercise scientists. One area we really encourage students to get involved in is research and consultancy. So going to university isn't just about coming out with your sport and exercise science degree. There's going to be lots of people that do that. It's about taking advantage of all the opportunities you can have at university. And one which is really important if you want to go and work in sport and exercise science is research and understanding the different areas you can get involved in. So some examples that we're currently involved in is doing research with the British synchronised swim team, looking at performance and how we can influence that, um, British triathlon athletes and how we can influence them via um, different supplements. We research with the British rowing team and from a psychological aspect, so how can sports psychology influence performance within rowing. We're also doing work with or in elite rugby, looking at how genetics can influence injury risk and concussion, which is a particularly popular area. But alongside the research, we're also doing a lot of work within consultancy, where we get sports teams in, athletes in, people from the general public in, and just doing lots and lots of different tests and lab-based tests. And this can really build up your practical lab-based skills. So it's really important that you come and get involved in these opportunities to just create that really robust CV. And upon, upon graduation, we have a really good employment figures. So 96.5% of Hearts graduates are in work or further study within six months. That isn't necessarily always in sport and exercise science, but it's within employment. So we've got a wide range of different areas that people go into, as I've previously shown. But we also have people go into things like recruitment consultancy, finance, business management and areas outside of sport and exercise science. 
And here are just some examples within sports science and outside of it. So sports science officers, English Institute of Sport, which is kind of the optimum level for elite performance, physiotherapy, metropolitan police, university hospitals, NHS, performance analysts within elite football clubs, teachers, strength and conditioning coaches, and then there's obviously the further study where people go into PhDs and masters. So as previously mentioned earlier, we get some really good feedback from students. And this is just some examples of what the students have actually said. So I don't, I don't want to read them all out word for word, but to start with the top one, the module provided are really interesting and provide a wide range of skills and knowledge. Lots of practical experiences provided. And we have the use of a brilliant amount of lab facilities. Very interesting practicals with invaluable experience. Friendly staff, other students are really friendly. And I'll let you read the other ones, but lots of kind of positive comments about staff and student interactions and facilities and support. In regards to grades in 2019, so last year's graduates, 71% got two ones or firsts and 27% of those were firsts. So some good achievements within our sport and exercise science degree. In regards to statistics, overall satisfaction was 92% on the national uh, student survey, 87% for learning opportunities. Was the course intellectually stimulating? Yes, 94% agreed with that. Did the staff make the subject interesting? Hopefully, from my point of view, and we 92% across there. And then one thing you really want to be important on your course is are staff good at explaining things? 98% there. Outside of study, we've got lots and lots of different sports to get involved in. So if you're applying for a sport and exercise science degree, and presuming you like sports, so we have lots, so over 30 different sports to get involved in. And every Wednesday is the Bucks League in whatever sport you're interested in. But if you don't want to get competitive, there are lots and lots of other active student type sporting activities in regards to different sports. So the best people to get involved with with that are the Athletics Union. If you get in contact with them, they can highlight how you can get scholarships based on particular sports and what sports you can get involved in and the squads and the different levels. We also have really good facilities. So at the moment, as I previously said, we're based at College Lane, but we're as a unit for sports science, we're moving over to De Havilland. And so De Havilland is where the Hertfordshire Sports Village is. So you can see some pictures of the climbing frames, football pitches, Mavericks, netball down there, badminton courts. This is now going to be our home. So our labs and our lecture theatres are going to be built alongside this. So we're going to have everything in regards to sports science in one place. So there's been lots of investment in this, a really big push to um, create a really good sporting environment. And then outside of sport, we've got lots of good facilities. So the top left is our learning resource centre, which used to be one of the biggest in Europe. I think we've lost that um, record now, but it is really impressive. So lots of books, lots of facilities, computers, quiet study rooms for you to get involved in. We're also in the centre there, we've got what's called the new science building, which has got lots of wet labs, dry labs, computer room facilities for you to utilise. And the bottom left is the halls of residence, so where you'd stay. And in the centre there, you've got the gym of that. And we've also got the Hutton Hub, which is where you have all your student facilities, like studying abroad, pharmacies, banks, student information, student advice. And then you have the Forum, which is where you've got lots of different eateries, the nightclubs, the pubs, and the other things which are important for outside of your study. And then, perhaps I'm not the best person to give advice on this one, but I have been informed that university life is not all about work, but there's lots of social activities as well. So one of the big things about university is not coming just to get your degree, but it's also to get involved in lots of different things outside that. And so there's lots and lots of different nighttime activities as well as daytime activities, lots of different nightclubs, lots of different things going on around the area to get involved in outside of your studies. But I think probably the best people to speak to is if you go via UniBuddy and speak to the student ambassadors who are currently here studying, they'll be able to tell you what the, the university social life is like. I'm uh, probably a little bit old for that one. And then contact information. So I'm John Brazier, I'm the admissions tutor. 
for Sport and Exercise Science. So if you've got any specific questions on the course, the change in entry requirements, or what's going on due to the coronavirus situation, just get in contact and I'll happily help. But anyway, that was a little insight into Sport and Exercise Science here at Hertfordshire. I hope that answered uh, perhaps a few questions you might have. Thank you.